Well, we got up to Bishop and early in the morning. We got up on Friday morning. We spent the night there Thursday night. And Bobby Tanner and his crew hitched up the mules and took them down the road near the playa where we were going to shoot and uh, pulled the wagons down into position. And as you can see, we are just getting into position and uh, my nephew, Jamie, was shooting and you can see the mules there pulling without the wheelers next to the wagons. Now, here's a great shot because you can actually see the pointers pulling the tongue of the wagon. Now, we're getting ready to turn off the road to make a right turn. And Bobby purposely left the wheelers out so we could get this shot so you could see how the mules are pulling the tongue of the wagon in the opposite direction of the mules that are going to begin to make the turn there up ahead. And you can see they're pulling the wagons far out to the left there as the mules in front begin to make the severe right turn. Now because these mules aren't officially really trained yet, they were really newbies, guys in training. This was a whole new set of 20 black mules. You can see they're using the little pole there, the outriders using the pole there to make sure that the mules stay out far enough and are pulling the wagons. Now here, the, the mules are really pulling in the opposite direction of the other of the rest of the team and you can see how that works right there there's a good shot there where you can really see the ears of the mules way out in the lead are really pulling to the right and these guys are pulling straight ahead and um, that gives you an indication of how and then here you can really see it here we pull out and the the, the pointers are facing towards us and then there you have the rest of the team heading out getting ready to make that right turn and of course uh, one of the guys one of the mules decided it was time to jump over the chain but it really wasn't time and there you can see the uh, the tangled mess that he made um, of the of the hitch there uh, the single trees uh, the, actually the double trees there and then the uh, the the singles he jumped over and and got it all uh, messed up of course I thought that was cool that he jumped over, but you can see right there in the close-up, look how tangled that chain is. And I'm sure those kinds of things happened to the guys, uh, you know, way back when, when they were trying to train these mules in the, in the 1870s and 1880s. Although I, I'm guessing it would probably have been easier to pick up a pair of trained mules in those days because people were using them to freight a lot. There you can see the really tangled uh, chain as a result of the mule jumping over so they had to do a little unhitching of the mules uh, of the two pointers there's Bobby Tanner in the background the mule driver and uh, these are his assistants the outriders they're called that, that ride on the horses so eventually they they did get them there's Bobby there with the the mules he's the uh, Bobby Tanner of uh, Red's Meadows which is a pack station up in the Sierras that uh, uses mules to take people into the backcountry of the Sierra Nevada mountains. So here you can see they are hitching the mules back to the back to the trees there. They're called those uh, because it's a bar with two of those trees. It's a double tree, and the uh, mules are hitched to that. So now they've got them. They've got them untangled, and they're they're ready to go again. So we are uh, we're waiting now. These are the these are the pointers again that are hitched to the tongue of the wagon. So off we go. They got the wagons uh, situated and got the got them going down the road. Made the turn. Now that's a crane that we're using to get the shots that we need to get. And uh, this is our little. That's me there. This that's me, your host Ted Fay here. Uh, and we're getting the shots of the mules. We set up a TV. Uh, a 32 inch television put it under a blanket so I could actually see without the glare and of course the cameras going back and forth to get you the shot now that's the crane on which we put the camera getting the shots that you are going to see here sure that's my nephew Jamie and of course that is the back 
uh, behind the scenes of us getting the shot. And then once again, coming in and seeing me, that's the shot on the TV that the camera on the crane is getting. And I'm um, calling the shots there, trying to direct our cameraman to get the, uh, get the shots that we want to get. So, and here's one of the shots from overhead, from the crane itself, uh, looking at the 20 mule team as it's coming towards us. And these are the kind of shots that we want to get so that I can incorporate these into other programs. Um, I'm giving you a behind the scenes tour of our shoot. At some point we'll incorporate these shots into programming. There, now you see the team came towards us and uh, not a jump happened. <laughs> so I was a little frustrated with that shot. That I was gonna get a jump in that shot. But it's a nice shot of the team coming towards us and and the wagons. Now. Now the team, they, they put the team out, now you can see, whoa, there's a little jump there by the mule before he was supposed to jump and he got a little caught up in the chain. Now you can tell how new these guys are. They weren't even going in any kind of straight line and, and <laughs> so, so they really tried to get him straight. That mule was fine and dandy, by the way, after that little uh, jump. They had to get him situated though and, uh, and so now here they are. You can see the wonderful straight line in which they are. Uh, heading towards us as they try to figure out what the heck they're doing because these guys really are new and Bobby was really trying to get them going. But there's a great shot of the jerk line. You can really see the line going all the way back from the lead mule to Bobby Tanner who's got the, uh, and there you can see him actually jerking it, trying to get them to make the turn to the right. And um, and here the pointers, the pointers are uh, are over the chain. Uh, coming out towards us and, and there you see them swinging swinging back towards us now that, I love this shot there you can see the bells on the mules it's a great shot and of course um, as they got a little closer to us it went out of focus a little but but enough of a good shot now here they're trying to swing the mules around you can see they're the, they're trying to guide them so I'm trying to get a pristine shot without people in it and just Bobby Tanner the mule skinner and the there you can see a jump uh, right there of the point, one of the pointers coming over the chain and going back over. But of course the outrider's in the shot because the outrider comes in and, and, and uh, spooks the mule enough so that he goes back over the chain. And eventually the, they don't need the outriders, but for right now they do. So I was trying to work around the outriders. And uh, here's uh, a shot that we just got. I was we were hoping to get the camera over a little bit to the right so we could uh, get some stuff but um, you know it's it's at least it's a little bit of a piece of the mules uh, coming towards us and here you can see how they're pulling the tongue right there so this is really the usable part of the shot right in there and this nice overhead um, which is what we needed some of the funding for was to really give us the crane so we could get some of these overhead shots and some motion shots. Now here you see, well there's the Sierras in the background looking spectacularly beautiful. And there's a jump by the mule uh, again as the outrider comes up. Now eventually that mule will associate Bobby's commands and there it goes back over the chain again. Eventually will associate Bobby's commands as opposed to having to have the outrider come up like he did there and put the mule over. So this is all sort of a big training session, and there the mule goes back over the chain again. And those are the mo two most important mules, or the mules out in front of the wheelers that really point the wagon in the direction, the wagons in, in the direction that they're supposed to go. And um, I love this shot. This is a great shot of the 20 mule team just sort of coming past us. And we were able to really get some wonderful shots that I'll be able to incorporate. We'll probably be doing a whole redo of the 20 Mule Team of Death Valley this year. Well, not probably, but will be. Um, and uh, putting new shots in, making it high def, uh, putting some breaks in, doing some more explanation, <clears throat> and really doing a whole revised version of that video. How's that? And here again is another, another shot of the 20 Mule Team coming towards us with a bit of a long lens, uh, which sort of pulls in the background. And there you can see the team making its way in our direction. Again, the outrider there next to Bobby, to the left of Bobby on the TV, and of course the the um, person guiding them there. But in 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 the days of the original 20 Mule team, it just would have been the driver, uh, Bobby Tanner, and the guy in the wagon. There's a there's a nice jump by the mules, but of course the 
the outrider, and then he comes up and and gives a little bump and gets the mule back over. And there's a great – now take a look at the – and there he goes back over again. So they're really trying to get them used to to doing that. Now that's a good shot. I can, I can use that shot because the outrider was out far enough. Now there you can really see Bobby working that jerk line. And, and there you go. There's, there he goes over the line. Now that line really – he uses it to sort of irritate the mule's ears. Um, that's really – uh, what that line is about and there you can see that line how he works it up and down and and there we got him going over the going over the chain there you could really see that and then you can see the jerk line in Bobby's hand and then he'll use that and and eventually that mule's ears will get so irritated with that l jerk line bumping up against it that he'll go oh I gotta get out of this I gotta make my ears feel comfortable and he'll jump back over the chain so it's a combination of them learning the voice commands as well as sort of physically being irritated, either having the chain rub up against their leg and they want to relieve themselves of that feeling so they jump over the chain. Or, as you can see there, Bobby's maneuvering the, the jerk line so that it does bump the ear of the mule. So, so he really learned all these little tricks about how to work within you know, how the mules respond. So here you can see there was uh, vehicles around that we did have. We're, we're, of course, trying to make it look as 1880s as possible. And uh, there are some tanks in the background there, which, 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 by the way, they did have big water tanks along the route for the 20 Mule Team. There are shots of those where they would have big water tanks up on, the, uh, up on wood planks. And then those water tanks would get filled by the teams as they came back and forth with the water wagons. So it wasn't that they took the water wagons all the way across the Mojave. They really used the water wagons to go from a spring, fill up at the spring, take the water to a certain spot, leave the water wagons there. And there you can see, there you can see Bobby really working the ears of that <laughs> mule, really working that line over the top of that mule so that he, there you go. And there, and there he did the jump by himself. So, so you see how they sort of get accustomed to working around that jerk line. Now he's got to be put back over because he doesn't quite get it yet. So you can see there it is, uh, at least his head going back over the, going back over the line. Now this, these are the shots that we really wanted to get because we really felt like it hadn't quite been captured yet. This, this whole why, how the turn is made. And, um, and there's a good shot of Bobby with the jerk line and with the mule there over the chain. You can see both mules are to the right of the chain where the, there he goes and he jumps back over. And, and that would be pulling the wagon straight. So this whole exercise of getting the mules to go back over the chain. Also, now it's possible the, the mules in front of the pointers there, depending on how sharp the turn is, the two mules in front of the pointers, as well as the next two, could also be put over the chain as well. And that was something that Bobby and I talked about, is that we, we do want to do additional shoots so that we get those kind of things. And there is shots of the mules making... Uh, I mean photographs, there's the mule jumping the chain, uh, photographs of the mules making a really sharp turn where you would uh, where you would see the two in front of the pointers and then the next two also going out over the chain. And again the uh, outrider comes up and puts the mule over. It's like as soon as he sees the horse he he figures that out that he needs to get out of the way. And there, there's a great shot there of working the jerk line and putting the mule over. So when Bobby works the ears of the uh, little uh, little dance there. So when Bobby works the ears of the mules, it's great. They sort of get, and you can see it right there. So we were able to get a, a, some really, really nice shots of the of the jumps. And, and that's something that we, we had really focused on. Stay right there. Hold that frame. Hold that frame, John. Hold that frame. Keep 
rolling, keep rolling. And here's the team coming at us in a nice overhead. And there you can see a really good jump there by the team, pulling the wagons out. You see how the tongue is turned turned away from the way the rest of the team is going. And and then they they come back underneath us there. So that that's really the kind of shot I was looking for. And we'll get a you'll see a few of those coming up here. Again, here's the team coming towards us. The the uh, guide gets out of the way. So now we have the illusion it's just the the team and the driver. Of course, the you can see the outrider come in there a little bit. And there you see Bobby wiggling the ear, getting the ear irritating the the mule and we got the jump right there which was really the probably one of the best shots of us of of the jump that we got nice and close overhead got that great got that great shot and um then a nice little tilt up of the wagons there and up to the mountains and then here's from another angle and and this is from on the ground so then you can see the the mule coming out towards us and and then the outrider comes back and and puts the mule well he didn't go back <laughs> he didn't go back over that time no 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 they do have a mind of their own that's one thing about mules for sure and it really is it really is a matter of uh, of them being comfortable with everything now here again is is another shot of them coming towards us a nice overhead and the mule coming back over the chain and then Bobby working the ears again and going back over so that's that's one of the best little sequences we have and there you can see how the team comes out and there's a great shot of the mule jumping back out over towards us and then then back over the chain now of course you know, we would probably, in, in to give the illusion that we would need to sort of piece this all together, um, which you'll see in the new, <laughs> the new 20 Mule Team DVD coming out this year. Uh, we've got a few 20 Mule Team things to release this year. We'll be letting you know about. Um, but again, there's the jump. Not quite as pretty as the other one. And coming directly underneath the camera. So these are the kind of shots we really were looking for. Now, you can see how there's still a lot of use of the Outrider. And here the team is off in the distance, and here's a couple of shots just to take you out here on the 20 Mule team. Thank you all so much for helping us get these shots. And uh, once you see them incorporated into a film, it'll feel, it'll feel a lot different. But, uh, and as you know, I'm sure you've figured out that the voice you hear calling out every now and then is me on the megaphone but again thanks everybody to the borax alumni for all of your help in putting this together come load up your wagons come hitch up your mules don't mind when the city folk call it and blues it's a life that we've chosen we make the rules we're the teamsters who haul the Mojave. We haul to the railroad from the Harmony Mills, up from the desert and over the hills. Every trip will try all of your skills with a 20 new team to Mojave. So load up your wagon. Come hitch up your mules Don't mind when the city folk call you them fools It's a life that we've chosen We make the rules We're the teamsters who haul the Mojave It's the back door of hell That you must go through With two loaded wagons And a water tank too To handle your team a jerk line must do on the Death Valley Road to Mojave. So load up your wagons, come hitch up your mules. Don't mind when the city folk call you bamboos. It's 
the life that we've chosen. We make the rules, we're the teamsters who haul the Mohawk The borax you're hauling weighs 22 tons, but it feels like 200 before you get done. Then there's two days to rest, and you're ready for fun when you come to the town of Mojave. The girls of Mojave, they'll give you a dance. If there's a card game, we'll all take a chance. We won't have enough left for a new pair of pants by the time we get out of Mojave. So load up your wagons, come hitch up your mules. Don't mind when the city folk call you damn fools. It's a life that we've chosen. We make the rules, we're the teamsters who haul 